So let's uh, have a little fun here. Let's explore something here. These are the longitudinal post uh, tensioning cables, top and bottom, the lower deck and the canopy. So let's go ahead and have a little fun. I'll show you drawings, and etc., and explore this. Bottom deck, that would be the, the truss that's in question about failure. This will come apart, you'll see in a minute. This is one of possibly two post tensioning rods that were uh, pulled on. Um, so that it goes through the uh, top deck, through the column, and through what they call the uh, clush, uh, blister. So this is just an exaggeration of the cable sticking out. If there was a second cable, it would be, um, it's there coming in, in roughly at the top of this guy. Maybe the other one was here. Now if it's off-centered at all, I mean if it's not balanced at all, um, say the cables on the first one's down here four inches and this one's down ten inches, that's not balanced. Those two there, that's an issue right there when you're pulling tension on this column. Um, when you're putting tension on this column with the... Uh, with the um, post tensioning. Um, all right, so this is a 90 degrees also, uh, roughly 90 degrees. This makes it pretty weak, it can just fall down. Whereas if you look at the far left of the bridge, um, this is more uh, almost, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of wh which way it was. Yeah, it's, 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 co it's cocked backwards, so as you put load coming down that one, if it was getting tensioned, it's forcing it this. Uh, try to um, straighten up if you will. So if you look to the left, number two and number three, um, that's the intersection I'm referring to when I show the, the pen in a different configuration. We look to the right, that's the collapse, the failure area, um, and that's number 10, 11, and 12 is the anchor point, the very bottom. That's very significant because the anchor point was able to hold long enough to pull this thing apart. Now, this one on the other hand, as you put load on it, it wants you just send um, forces down this column here and down this column and a secondary break um, or third break um, failure second or third failure was in the bottom deck right about the end of this column um, so this is number um, 11 and that's number 10 as I recall so number 10's forces are here and number 11 is here um, now if you look at the drawings if you look at the drawings, they have uh, multiple holes for, for what appears to be uh, post tensioning coming after the fact, after the two bridges are drawn together, uh, after the two bridges are installed. There's a post, another post tensioning cable comes all the way through both decks. This one they, and the uh, 100 foot deck. This is, I think, the 174, 175 feet foot deck. Um, so it only has two at this point, it appears, two active ones now. Uh, I think they're somewhere about here. Nevertheless, th th this is this zone, it's nothing in this zone as far as post tensioning goes. It, there's a hole here, ready, a future hole, and a future hole here roughly. So uh, my thinking is these are these future holes um, are underneath the bar blisters, and these future holes, I'm calling them, um, weaken the deck when it goes into compression at the far end when they get post-tensioning. As you turn this and look sideways, that's, that doesn't fall down. It's, it's, this is sort of showing you that the top layer, bottom layer of the deck, if you will, there's no, as far as I know, it was all one pour, so there aren't any cold joints there, but that is a question. Um, so that would be your bottom um, decking. The concrete goes in there along with these post-tensioned, uh, these cables and um, concrete is installed to, um, it's, all stall, it's all stalled in one mold or is the uh, blister put on last, which gives it a, kind of a cold joint right there, which gives it a, uh, a, a weakening shearing, shearing point also. But let's go ahead and imagine that this is being pulled, the uh, cable down here. It's being pulled, from the, tightened from the top. There we go. So as I pull, and imagine these are, there's plenty of these on the bottom deck. Um, these guys seem like they're all installed, all the post tension for the bottom deck going across. But as you pull on, if we focus on this top joint, um, what they call a blister, as you pull on that, 
it's want, it wants to compress this area here. Um, now there is it, it's solid concrete, right? So it will it will fail if you keep including the increasing the load. Um, you'll create tension on the underside of this. So tension looks like imagine a V like this, like that. That's what the that's what the failure is going to sort of look like there. If you if you're pulling down, creating tension. So it's a it would be a V right about there, and 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 oddly and not oddly at all, that that lines up with the uh, cabling. So as you're pulling this guy through, you're creating a failure you want to see on the side of that, that that you're trying to create. Well, not purposely, but you're trying to create it if you're applying it. And so here's your uh, your tension you're creating. Now coming back to the cables and looking at the end of this deck of the canopy, they call it. If you were to remove the top layer, and let's do it so you can get the most value for from me removing this top layer. If we can just pull this out. Now, we remove the top layer. There is, what's left is, and I'll go up with the camera now. What's left are the are the cables, the post-tension cables on the outside. Now, if I, re, if I put back the, um, the blister, putting back the blister, um, imagine the path of the hole in the lower part of the deck. As that's pulling down, that wants to make this flatten out. This area here wants to flat. It wants to push it down. It wants to flatten it out right here. It wants to flatten this out. And you have these, the strength is out here. This, and the load's coming down this radius. It wants to push out that direction. And it wants to push that direction. And it's pushing down. Um, I need to make note that they did have transverse um, reinforcement uh, rebar going across the top of this also from side to side. Um, obviously that wasn't significant enough. And it's in the direction of weakness for the bridge failure. When you're compressing this area here, so this is sort of looking at it from the side, this is supposed to be resisting. This column, if like the other one, had a column going straight up and down as you, as I still, well, it's like that. So as you put load up here trying to push down, pull downwards, See, it's pushing, pulling down. See what's going on there? That bottom left one is kicking as I do it. So that's going to create that failure here too. So the load is here and pressing at the same time on the lower deck. The lower deck has a lot more of these guys going on, a lot more post-tension cables down there to resist this force, these forces. But it can only resist for so long. So the, the, everyone's saying the bridge is weak concrete and all. Well, that would have helped it if this only failed. If this guy would have failed, um, um, it, but it, it was able to take the load, but it buckled at some point, um, a slight buckling, because we need some movement. If we can't get this guy to move, if we can't get either one to get these to move, well, then I can't get this to go down. If I can't get this to go down, I can't, I, I'm just transferring the loads to here, um, to here, and to here, and it's just it's okay, you know, nothing, nothing's happening until you just keep increasing the load. At some point, this can't take the load anymore. I think number 11 uh, reflects or shows that uh, it deflected very slightly here. But, but to get that deflection, um, the, well, also part of the thing, uh, the whole theory, my theory is, these two cables on the outside did not offer the engineering to take this load, this compression, even though it lined up with this guy also, it um, bowed. And once it bowed, let me give you a little light here. Once it bowed, once these cables bowed down, once they broke, broke their back, if you will, once it went, once this load pushed down and it pushed these cables, no longer keeping taut from end to end, it flexed it down, if you will. Let me see if I can show you, if I can give you an idea. It's now, it's now that point of no return. It's in the it's in the V shape. It's in the V shape now. And now it's not going to come back. It's just going to collapse in, fold in on itself as the load transfer to there. Once you broke this part, all the load transferred to this guy, this section over here, it broke the lower part of the deck and that was it. It just collapsed in. So you you created um this moment this 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 moment by this compressing this deck. Okay, so 
the uh, the post tension cables for the upper deck. Dirty fingernails, right? The uh, post tension cables are in a uh, in a flexible white tubing, as you can see online. Um, so it's not it wasn't a rigid tube, and they're not grouted. They're not they're, they weren't grouted solid. So you can see this tube has some play in it, right? As I have this cable down there, this <laughs> this the cable, stranded cable, no less. You know, it's just like there. Um, so I'm having fun there. So uh, you see the room in there. So imagine this is pinned here on the right side and pinned on the left side where it can't move. And you put tension on it. So now it can't move. Um, and this has concrete all around this tube, if you will. Um, but what if there was a section there that underneath that flexible tube, when they started loading it with the uh, post-tension cable, which it did cross that area. Remember, it's crossing it out here. And here's this guy up here. But the force is are pulling, pushing down on this cable here. And now, what if it's pushing down on that, onto the top of that section there, that that section broke? See, it's still, the cable's still there, but it gave it enough room to, to flex. Let's see if I can come in closer. It gives it enough room to flex to, uh, that, the, that the pressure from this can break the roof of this um, tube, if you will, the channel, the, the flexible conduit that they ran it into. Um, since it wasn't grouted, it doesn't act as one anymore. And the, the load would be, uh, it could crack that. Now, it's only cracking here and here, but um, the, the, the reinforcement, the transverse reinforcement is, is in line with it, with the break. So that's not going to be um, fighting too much against this, uh, against this guy here. It fights the outside forces, but not the... Uh, not this force. This again would be your upright. But so as it's compressing, um, see how we have movement here? So it's compressing. Maybe this guy flex differently, and that caused that that gave it its uh, deflection. Its um, deflection it needed. It needed to break to start it going. And we're only talking a little bit, right? But as I pull this cable, you can see that's this cable. You know this imaginary cable. As I pull it taut. And I flex this. You can see I've got a lot of movement there. Um, if I could break, if I can get this to push down, um, it, it could it could start the break that it needed. And once it broke that, if it could just touch that cable and start that cable on a bend like that, then you know. But we're running into this guy. Then you're going to get the deflection of this guy. A sudden hit like the door opening. Maybe this was like the door opening. I, you know, I'm giving a theory here. That's the end of this video. which did not have the ability to take the load as the supports were too far away, the supports. Now, if this had those uh, post-tensioning inside there, the other two cables, if it had it in there, this would have then been able to take a lot more load. And perhaps that's where they made a mistake. Maybe they just, maybe they ran one plan, when they're seeing if they could test it or load it, and they ran it with the idea that these cables were in, that they, they made a mistake, that the cables were not placed when they did their mock-up, their drawings or their mathematics through calculation. I don't know how they did it. You know, what program they're using? Did they make one special for this build? Um, so whatever it is, I think they left off that these guys were not part of the formula anymore when they decided to put load on this. Now talking about the crack. The crack. All right. So they had two year, a two-hour meeting on it, and the guy literally left a voicemail saying, I don't think it's structural. So if it's not structural, it's not a concern. Um, it's not a concern, but we all think they're working on trying to fix this crack. Well, if it's not a concern, why are you trying to fix it? So you, it's like they're, they're double dipping here. One, they're saying it's not a concern, and two, they're trying to fix it. So you, I don't know where this crack is. Um, it appears it would be down here. If you're going to tension this, it appears that maybe the crack would have been right along this, this, this section here. Um, which falls on everybody's thinking that when they moved the bridge that that uh, created the crack because of the overhang, the cantilever. Hmm. But then we have this, why is this? Why are there post-tensioning cables in here when there were supposed to be none? And then the other thing is maybe they put it in there because they knew they were going to overhang the bridge when they did this installation. <sighs> All right. What if they loosen the cables? Well, if you loosen it, you've got no load on it anymore. There's no load pulling down on the bottom of this. 
it is from the lower deck pulling down and the gravity of the top upper deck. But I'm going to keep this model around. I'm going to post this video. You guys can, um, you know, you can, you can, you control it. I just did this all on the fly as far as uh, narrating it. I'm sure I left something out that I wanted to include. That's the way it works.